Hey guys, Paulie Howard. I'm with NBC Sports Radio. It's Wednesday, July 29th. Before I tell you what I'm betting, it's time to rant and run. Good start to the day as Tom Brady has a statement on his Facebook page and Robert Kraft went after the league in Goodell today. He said, I was wrong to put my faith in the league. He went after the league for all the leaks. Goodell can't even keep his own house in order, but we're supposed to believe and respect this guy after what's happened the last five, six months? And he went after the NFL leaking the erroneous Mortensen report uh, that 11 to 12 balls were two pounds under. Good job, Kraft. And yes, he made a mistake. And Tom Curran pointed that out in Boston that it's 31 against one. Don't back down. And the Patriot fans are going to be pissed at you if you didn't come out strong today, and he did. Go after the NFL and go after Goodell because they're wrong. You can't give a first-time offender a four-game suspension for lack of cooperation. This isn't even close to being on the level of domestic violence and steroids, and the NFL says it is. So maybe Brady received bad advice about the phone. Uh, the NFL is winning in the court of public opinion. But Brady came out today. He still believes he did nothing wrong. He thinks it's ridiculous. And, and a good question here, I will buy anybody dinner to their restaurant of choice in Las Vegas, if you can answer this question. They don't need a cell phone anyways. Jastrzemski and McNally had to turn over their cell phones because they were issued by the Patriots. They were team cell phones. The league has those phones. So if they're looking for a smoking gun about, hey, do this to the ball, they would have it because they have those two cell phones. So why they need his, his cell phone in the first place doesn't make any sense because if they're looking for the smoking gun, they would have it. Also, there's a back and forth and a disagreement about was there a settlement offer made. As Goodell said, we'd give him two games or even one if he admitted he knew what, if he was aware, you know, if he was aware what Jastrzemski and McNally were doing. And Brady today said that's not true and those talks went, it didn't go anywhere. So, this could go into 2016. He's going to get that injunction and take it to federal court. The NFLPA is behind him. His team of lawyers are ready to fight. And now, as we go to federal court, we know this. It either stays at four or it gets thrown out and goes to zero. And how long will this take? Could he look at the suspension in December or January? You know, that's something he's going to have to go over with Belichick and Kraft, too. But this don't give me the integrity of the game business either. You got half these guys running around juiced out of their minds. Again, the Seahawks lead the league in PED suspensions since Carroll took over. No one says a word. Integrity of the game. Jerry Rice admits to using stick'em. Nobody cares. They hate this team. Most hated team in sports. And getting and beaten the court of public opinion because the NFL continues to leak info. So good job fighting back by Brady and Kraft. And now we know it's either four or going to be zero. And the fight rolls on and the fight continues. And shame on the NFL because this will be the story going until September and October and maybe in even November. And we'll see how it plays out. But good job by Kraft today. Good job fighting back. And a pretty good statement out of Brady. But, you know, I'd like to see the guy have a press conference too. And I'll tell you this. If, for argument's sake, and maybe he did, you know, he did something wrong and he told McNally what to do with the footballs, there must be some powerful stuff on that cell phone that he'd rather, he's worried about, forget about the $2 million, the legacy and the suspension, I'm not handing this over, for argument's sake, about what could be damaging on that cell phone, he doesn't want to get out there. You know, the personal life about the marriage is being floated out there as well, and, you know, I believe anything at this point. Time to tell you what I'm betting. Featured Pro picks up at pregame.com. How fun is this? Here they are again. Steven Over and Uncle Dave, Dave Essler. Steven Over, 9-0 with the three-star picks. 9-0 stretch. Game of the month goes today. He tries to make it 10 in a row with his three-star. Grab that today. What more needs to be said? Unbelievable. In the five weeks I've been with pregame, the work, the energy, the confidence level, how impressive this guy has been giving out the winners and the three stars. And he tries to make it 10 in a row. Uncle Dave, his three-star game of the week goes today. He's off a 4-0 sweep yesterday. Grab Uncle Dave's pick as well as he's been crushing it for five weeks on pregame. Uh, where we had a loser yesterday, so the our winning streak is over. The four-game winning streak, the 11-15 run ends. Nothing today because six six games were a team's a buck 80 or higher. So not, not much you can do with that, and the pros can't agree on a game today. So we'll, we pass. We're back tomorrow. Paulie's pick from the pros, handicapping the cappers and finding that hidden gem and bringing it to you every day. The free pick. Betting half a unit on this one. We try to continue the winning streak as the pros have been sharp here. It's uh, Steven Over, the Angels, Richards. He loves Richards as a dog. McCullers has cooled off a bit 
in the last month or so. Read his full write-up on the game and get all the free picks up at pregame.com. I've ranted. Now I'm going to run. Good luck out there. We'll see you tomorrow on pregame.com.